In this tutorial I'll explain how to divide the legend of a ggplot2 plot into two separate parts using the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video I will show you an example and this example is based on the data frame object that we can create with lines 2 to 4 of the code. So if you run these lines of code you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new data frame object is appearing which is called data and if you click on this data object you can see that a new window is opened which is showing the structure of our data frame and as you can see our data frame contains six rows and three columns which are called x, y and group whereby the columns x and y contain numeric values and the column group is a group indicator. If we want to draw these data using the ggplot2 package, we also need to install and load the ggplot2 package as you can see in lines 6 and 7 of the code. I have installed the package already, so for that reason I'm just going to load it with line 7 of the code. And after running this line of code, we can use the functions of the ggplot2 package such as ggplot and geompoint as you can see in lines 9 to 12. So if you run these lines of code, you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new plot object is appearing, which is called ggp. And we can draw this plot to the bottom right of RStudio by running line 13 of the code. So after running this line of code, you can see at the bottom right that we have created a scatter plot with six different groups. And you can see the legend of this plot on the right side of the plot. So let's assume that we want to split this legend into two different parts. Then we need to install and load the grid extra and the cowplot packages as you can see in lines 15 to 19 of the code. I have installed those packages as well so for that reason I'm just going to load them with line 16 and line 19 of the code. And after running these lines of code we can apply the code that you can see starting in line 21. So in the first step I'm splitting the data frame that we have used in the first plot. So in this case I'm specifying that I want to create a data frame subset which contains only the groups A and B. So if you run line 21 of the code you can see at the top right of RStudio that a new data set is appearing which is called data split 1. And we can print this data frame to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line 22 of the code. And then you can see that this data frame contains only the rows with a group A and B. And then in the next step we can draw a plot of these data using the ggplot2 functions as you can see in lines 24 to 30 of the code. And note that we are specifying manual colors for this plot and we are specifying a label for our legend. So if you run lines 24 to 30 of the code, another plot object is appearing at the top right, which is called ggp split 1. And we can draw this plot to the bottom right by running line 31 of the code. And then you can see that we have created a plot which contains only the two groups A and B. And you can also see that we have manually specified the colors for these groups. In the next step I'm using the getLegend function to extract only the legend of this plot and I'm doing that by running line 33 of the code. So in this line of code I'm applying the getLegend function to our plot object ggp split 1 and then I'm assigning the output of this in a new data object which is called ggp legend split 1. So if you run line 33 of the code you can see at the top right that a new data object is appearing which is called ggp legend split 1 and then in the next step I'm applying basically the same code to the other groups of our data as you can see in lines 35 to 45 of the code. So in these lines I'm subsetting our data to contain only those groups that are not equal to A or B. So if you run lines 35 and 36 you can see at the bottom that we have created another data set where we have excluded the groups A and B. If we run lines 38 to 44 you can see that another plot object is appearing at the top right which is called ggp split 2 and if we draw this plot object to the bottom right 
And you can see that we have created another ggplot2 scatterplot in which the remaining groups C, D, E and F are shown. Then in line 47 of the code, I'm again applying the getLegend function to this plot and I'm storing the output of this in another data object, which is called ggp legend split 2. And then after running this line of code, you can see that this data object is appearing at the top right as well. So in the next step, starting in line 49 of the code, I'm creating a plot without any legend. So if you run lines 49 to 55 of the code, you can see that another plot object is appearing at the top right, which is called ggp no legend. And we can draw this plot to the bottom right by running line 56 of the code. And then you can see that we have created a scatter plot showing all the points of all groups in our original data frame. However, this time our plot is not showing any legend. So at this point, we have created all plot objects that we need. And now in the final step, we can apply the grid arrange function to arrange these objects in a graphic. So within the grid arrange function, I'm first specifying the first legend that I want to show. Then I'm specifying the plot without any legend. And then I'm specifying the second part of our legend. And finally, I'm specifying that I want to show our plot legend composition in three columns. So column one contains the first part of the legend, column two contains the plot, and column three contains the second part of the legend. So if you run lines 58 to 61 of the code, you can see at the bottom right that we have created a scatter plot with two legends, and the left side of the legend shows the groups A and B, and the second part of the legend shows the remaining groups C, D, E and F. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.